Hello, I'm Ron Fine, and uh, today I have brought some of my glacial erratics. And if uh, Greg will get a close-up of these, you'll see that every one of these erratics is coral. I grew up in Bellbrook, Ohio, and the only place I had to fossil hunt was in the Sugar Creek Reserve. And I'm pretty sure it's Liberty Formation, and there's lots of horn coral and brachiopods, all the usual stuff, lots of trilobite fragments. And then I kept finding chunks of coral. Now, turns out the park has a lot of really nice glacial features, and I'm, my memory's a little faded now. The, one of those long, can't keep my canes and eskers straight, there's, there's a long snake feature where there was a river and a glacier, and it filled up with gravel, and they, they have one of these in the park. And, well, the creek cut through all these features and, and lots of all this glacial material which was scooped up by glaciers and brought down from Canada and northern Ohio and dumped in the park. Got, it's all mixed in with all the Ordovician material. So here and there for about 20 years I would find chunk of coral after chunk of coral and some of them are pretty cool. These are awesome. These are beautiful. And this is what? Did you say 20 year collection? This, this I've got about 30 more pieces at home but they look terrible. The, the only okay. thing they'd be good for is one of those rock tumblers to polish them up. Okay. And uh, the, these were the ones where you could actually see the structure. You, you could make out some detail. See the septa and, and all the little chambers and everything. Okay. But you're saying this was a 20, you've been doing this for about 20 years? This, is, this well, collection I mean, represents about a few decades, right? Yeah, this is about 20 years of hunting wow. in that park. Great. Because I, I know when I was out collecting ours, we found it was a needle in a haystack. You'd find one for every two hours you searched if you were lucky. Is that about what you were doing? I found one about every second or third trip. Oh. Maybe every so, fourth so or it is, trip. It's, so it is indeed a needle in a haystack where yes, you are too. It was wow. very much so. Okay, that's, that's kind of what I thought. And, and again, for the people tuning in who are not familiar with this, we're finding Canadian fossils in Cincinnati, Ohio, without making that trip to Canada. The glaciers have brought them in. So it's a real nice thing to be able to find these exotic fossils from far away without having to spend the gas money. But you have to love fossils to spend all those hours searching anyway. And these are really cool. Well, wading through a cool creek on a hot summer day was a good way to go. One of these is a chain coral. Uh, it was that guy right there. So I, I can never tell because it was beat oh, up so this much. Is chain coral? Oh yeah. The, yeah. The now now that you mention it, I remember seeing these in books. The other 30 or so that. pieces that wow. I have at home, they're, they're so worn you can't really tell they're coral. But the reason I found them is because they were in the creek. And when, they're, when the rock is wet, you can make out the, the structure of it on mm -hmm. the surface. So if the rock were to be cut and polished or tumble polished, they'd probably show up pretty nice. But for somebody walking by, looking at it, it just looks like another rock. Oh, look at this one. Oh, that's nice. And so what's the significance of this color? Um, that I, it's kind of it's, goldish it's, and tan, it's but crystalline too. Oh, look it, at that. I've done look an acid all test the crystals. on that when I was a teenager. Keegan, you guys see all these crystals? That is a, a quartz replacement on that. Okay. Which is what we have here in Cincinnati, but just it looks a little different. They're little, the crystals are a lot smaller and shinier. Yeah, but the really cool thing is the seasonal layers 
okay. where the polyps were ha fat and happy for a while, and then they were miserable and really short, and then they get fat and happy again. Oh, so you're refer okay. So I see this the the fat chambers and the skinny chambers. No. So the skinny chambers are representing less than ideal conditions, that probably. Would, that'd be my guess. There, okay. there are seven distinct layers on there. This is a chert replacement? Yeah, that, that one's chert, or uh, drawing a blank on the other mouth. Okay. Was Flint, thank you. Oh, okay. And uh, if, if you look on that one surface, you can see circular features. Yep. And I, I don't know if that one's a coral or something else. It has real interesting structure to it. What impressed me was the incredible variety that turned up. You mean the, these different species of coral? Yeah, they must, the must have found 30 or 40 wow. different species. Yeah, this definitely is a different one, the one I have in my hand right now. The texture looks different. You're lucky to find, what, half a dozen variety in the Cincinnatian. Ooh, look at the edges. Corals that were glacial erratics too. They were polished up every bit as much as these, but I left those at home. Okay. Nobody wants to see Cincinnati in ones. <laughs> you got to see this. This is not coral. This is trace fossil. This is probably a little worm tube. Worm. I haven't looked at this stuff in 20 years. It's all been lumped in a box. Oh, look at the weird. Quite a few like that. Okay. Well, that's cool. That is really neat. Okay. Well, thank you, Ron. And now we're going to share it with everybody on YouTube, and all the uh, fossil lovers can check it out.